Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another planty video. Thank you so much for joining me. So today we are going to be doing an updates, highlights, slash walkthrough video for the month of April. Now, I think I'm actually going to be doing these videos monthly, at least for the growing season, because there's just so much going on. There's so much that I want to show you all the time. And even though I did my houseplant tour just about a month ago, there's already been so many changes. Like, it's honestly just crazy how much things are growing and changing. And yeah, I just, I love to just take you around and keep you in the loop with what's going on in my collection. Also, from the perspective of a viewer, if my favorite planty channels did an updates walkthrough video, every month I would eat that up so yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna put it out there for y'all I like to keep my subscribers well fed let me know if you concur with monthly walkthrough update videos I'm assuming that we're all in agreement though right right Ooh, the Sun is coming out little side note but I have so much fun creating these videos for you guys this channel has truly brought so much joy into my life and I'm just so happy that I'm able to create content full-time it truly is a dream come true. Although there are of course sides to it that I struggle with sometimes, um, like more practical things such as learning new skills, usually tech things, but also more personal things like just getting down on myself, feeling discouraged and a lot of comparison to others, which obviously is a really big thing in the online space. <laughs> I'm sure many of you can understand and relate to that even if you're not a content creator. I've really been working to try to improve my mindset and a constant resource for inspiration and motivation and learning new things has been Skillshare. So thank you so much to Skillshare for partnering with me on today's video. I recently hopped onto Skillshare and took a class called Unlocking Your Potential, Five Exercises to Build Creative Confidence. And I feel like it really helped me identify some unhelpful patterns that I may have and gave me the motivation to move forward in a positive direction. Skillshare is a massive online learning community for creatives. And I, for one, am so grateful for them because for my job, there's not really a blueprint. So it's nice that there are some resources that are out there. They offer classes on a wonderful variety of different topics, including productivity, illustration, design, photography, the list goes on and on. There really is something for everyone on there. I definitely recommend checking them out if you're someone who's wanting to learn a new hobby, maybe brush up on some skills that you already have, or even launch a side hustle. I feel like there's just so much useful information on there. And if you're not sure where to start, Skillshare has curated learning paths. Learning paths are a group of hand-picked classes that are all meant to build upon each other, reinforcing all of the lessons. So you can kind of go deeper and deeper into a certain subject. They're available in a range of experience levels and a broad variety of different topics like design, productivity, creative freelancing, tools and software, marketing, and more. If you would like to try out Skillshare for yourself, and I highly recommend you do, the first 500 people who click the link down below in the description box will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Now let's hop into all of the plenty updates. I am so excited to take you all around. Okay, let's go. Okay, I just switched to my other microphone because this one is better for being on the move. So I guess, oh my goodness, I don't even know where to start. I guess I'm gonna start at my vid show shelf right here. So let's back up. Okay, so I feel like it's a little bit chaotic. You might see some strange things, actually not might, you will see some strange setups like this and it's because of my um, veggie seedlings. These ones are not very old yet, but I think it's mostly kale and lettuce in this one, but they need to be really close to the grow lights. So, um, and then I kind of lower them down as they grow, but yeah, so I have stacked a pot. I actually do this for my house plants too. Like down here, I have a bunch of different pots stacked um, just to get plants where they need to be in relation to the grow light. So I just kind of, I just kind of make it work. Another thing that's chaotic on this shelf are my Hoya. These are my new Hoya from Plant Haven Toronto lined up here, and these need to be repotted. We are gonna be repotting this repotting them this month thank goodness because they are just they're already growing like crazy and i haven't even had them for that long look at these vines there's just tendrils everywhere um whoopsies sorry buddy yeah there's they're just they're out of control <laughs> hoya has gone wild probably one of the cooler ones that's been giving me new growth has been the insularis you can see the darker ones there are new leaves um actually quite a few of them came out probably about five or so New leaves came out, so this is like a cutie little bushy plant now, so that's really cool. 
I think that they've pretty much all given me new growth now, so they're doing well. Whoops, they need to be watered. It's not bone dry, but they'll probably, be, pro they'll probably need to be watered tomorrow. If you can see the beast that is behind my Hoya, that is my Maranta silver band. And first of all, just look at all of her flowers. Like, are you kidding me? And she's already lost a whole bunch of them. She's just been in constant bloom basically since I got her. Um, I'm gonna pull her out so that I can show you in all of her glory because I honestly, I'm so shook by this plant, you guys. Okay, look at the amount of leaves that she has. It's like layers and layers of leaves. Like she is so, so bushy. I think, I think she's thirsty too, so I'll pop her in the sink. But yeah, she's like bone dry. But oh my gosh, you guys, I cannot believe just how well this plant has been doing. It is so crazy and I'm so thankful because a lot of y'all know how badly I wanted Amarantha Silver Band. She's been under the Barina lights, pretty close to the Barina lights actually. And she's just been giving me the most beautiful leaves. She's been blooming like crazy. I haven't repotted her at all. She's still in like the nursery pot and the soil that she came in. Tons of new leaves coming in. Yeah, she's just doing amazing. So I've been so, so happy with this plant. Look at all of her little flowers are just like the most cutie patootie thing ever. I'm just, I'm obsessed. So yeah, I was really excited to give you an update on her because she's just looking so stunning. Another exciting update on this shelf is my beautiful philodendron Jose Buono. I just about perished when I saw this leaf unfurl. Um, I showed this in my favorites video, but the leaf was still like completely furled up and it looked like it was gonna be all white. So I was a little concerned, but now that it's unfurled and you can see it does have some green on it, just look at how beautiful that is. Oh my goodness, this is honestly like one of the prettiest leaves I've ever seen. It's just perfect, oh my gosh. This like minty section here, oh, it's just so, so pretty. So yeah, I've just been literally staring at this. It used to be at the back of the shelf, um, but I've since moved it to the front just so that I can admire it. Also, there's been a miracle with my Monstera Siltipicana. It wasn't growing for a really long time. Um, and I don't even remember what I did. I honestly don't remember what I did. Um, I know I did something, but what was it? I know I cut it completely back, but I can't remember if I put something in the mix or if I treated it. I mean, I must've treated it for flat mites. So maybe it had flat mites, but it is just taking off now. Like there's so much new growth and I'm so excited because I love Monstera Siltipicana. I've just never been able to grow it well. So look at her, she's getting happy and that makes me happy. So that's another really positive update. What else, what else? I need to be more selective about what I talk about or else this video is gonna take forever. Um, we do have some new growth on my philodendron Camposportuanum, which I didn't know if this philodendron was even gonna grow for me because I, the story behind this is I took propagations and then I left them in water for like pretty much a year. So I didn't even know how they were gonna transition to a potting mix, but it seems to be doing well. There's another new leaf that's trying to unfurl back there. So I'm really happy to see uh, all these growth points activating on her. Hoyas are doing well down here also, especially now that the flat mites are being resolved. I'm getting some beautiful new growth. Look at this, like that is so silver. Oh my gosh, it's blinding, like look at her. Yeah, Wilbur Graves is looking amazing. We have some new vines coming out. Oh my gosh, and a new baby leaf. Can you see that on my Hoya Pricte? That's super, super exciting. Hoya Compacta is doing well. She's recovering from her flat mites slowly but surely. Somebody commented saying that she has scale um, and I can see why they would think that because she has a lot of foliage that kind of just like looks kind of funky, but that's not scale. It's just flat mite damage. They can make it look really like, um, uh, yeah, like I can see how it could look kind of like scale in videos, but it's just, it's just flat mite damage. Do you see that? My camera doesn't want to focus, but you can see it. So no scale on her, thankfully. But um, yeah, this shelf is honestly doing so much better than it was before, so I'm really happy about that. We have a new leaf on my Alocasia Maharani. It's much smaller than the la last leaf, but that's okay. I'm still waiting for a new leaf to come out on my Cupria. 
I've done some rearranging on my Ethereum area here. I ended up adding my Alocasia Michaeliciana. I just felt, okay, well, here's what happened. My Crystal Meg, that big Ethereum there, used to be living in the middle here, but um, it was just getting way too close to the grow light. So I've switched that out for my Alocasia Michaeliciana because I really think that she's gonna enjoy the high light in this spot. And she's already popping out two new leaves. Um, yeah, there's two new leaves that have emerged. So that's really cool to see. I really hope that I can get her to just become a big plant. Um, oh my goodness, you guys, and my anthurium is pregnant. Sorry, this is all over the place, but my anthurium is literally pregnant. Look at that. Do y'all remember when I just casually pollinated this in I think the video where I actually mounted this Russo grow light? casually rub them together and she is with child and she is also with new leaf if you see that right there so this is my anthurium oh gosh a magnificum luxuriance hybrid and honestly i'm pretty impressed by this new leaf i always say that i prefer the crystal mag luxuriance because i probably do but um I do really, really like this new leaf. Like that is looking stunning. The color, oh my gosh. I am impressed. I'm thinking of getting rid of this Anthurium um, because I recently ordered a wish list Anthurium, which actually might come today. I feel like it should have come today, but maybe it'll come tomorrow, I guess. But I recently ordered a wish list Anthurium and I kind of want to do like one in, one out situation because I want to grow this one big. And, you know, I only have room for so many <laughs> big anthuriums. They take up a lot of space, as you can see. I also moved my uh, Florida Ghost onto here. I need to, like, move this around a little bit, though, because it's, like, not getting any light where it is right now. Maybe if I move it back there, it's a little bit better. And my Hoya Crimson Princess I moved up there as well. Down here, we have some of my Hoya that have been recovering from Mealy's and they're actually doing quite well. The one that had them the worst was my Hoya Mini Pixie right here. And she's bouncing back, you guys. I actually used the new Bios um, herbal pesticide to treat her. I was just, I was just experimenting with it on some of my plants to see how well it would work. And um, the Mealy's are pretty much gone, honestly. I mean, I'm still gonna probably do a couple more treatments, but it's so much better than it was before. I don't want to jinx myself, but I haven't really seen Mealy's pop up here in a while. She was actually blooming for me and they were the cutest, like just petite, tiny little blooms ever. So yeah, I'm, this Hoya is really growing on me. I love that it's called Hoya Mini Pixie as well. And yeah, it's just like such a cutie little whimsical plant. So um, yeah, that was fun to see her bloom and I haven't even had this plant for long. So really cool. New leaves coming in on my what is this? I always forget what it's called. 001 Sumatra or something like that. A few new leaves. And she's actually like trying to cling on to the Vitscho shelf. Again, I had to make space for some of my veggie seedlings. <laughs> These are my kale. Um, they're doing okay. I ordered some Marfil. I caved and ordered it. It's so expensive, but I think that my seedlings are really gonna like it. So I'm waiting for that to come. And then there's more seedlings in there. My, oh yeah, I repotted some of my baker eye seedlings. As you can see, they're literally everywhere. I put like four or five per pot because I truly just like don't have the space to put one per pot. Um, and they're doing fine. I, I really didn't know how it was gonna go considering I was sticking these tiny seedlings into these like big giant cups or pots. I mean, like giant in comparison to the plant, but they're actually doing well and they're putting out new leaves and stuff. So. I don't know. It's working for me and it's working it's working for them. Probably not a perfect ideal setup, but you know, we are limited with space. So um, yeah. We also have my prop box here, which I probably need to go through this soon because Lord knows what's in here. Oh my goodness, what is even in here? There's like Hoya, Begonia, Syngonium. I think those are my El Choco chunks. Maybe I'll do a video going through my props and potting some of them up. Um, I had to move that there because I actually, my boyfriend kicked my propagation station out of the office. So it's now there. And as you can see, it mostly has my veggie starts on it uh, as well. So once I can get some of those veggie starts outside, then I'll kind of have more space for like these babies and my prop box and stuff. But um, 
we're just working with what we have right now. It's definitely just like a chaotic time <laughs> considering I'm trying to like get the garden going as well outside. Um, so we are all just hanging in here. And honestly, I don't mind it that much. I feel like I've really let go of this idea of um, having a perfect plant shelf. Like I have a lot of plants. I love growing a lot of plants and I don't really care if it's not perfect. I don't care if it looks a little bit chaotic. It's definitely not like an Instagram worthy plant shelf, but it makes me happy and it accommodates my plants. So I'm good with that. Over on this shelf, everybody's doing pretty well also. Um, I'm getting lots of new growth on my Ripsalis Paradoxa, which makes me really happy because I just love this plant so much. I would love to get this into a hanging basket and then hang it somewhere in this area. I also repotted my Anthurium black velvet the other day. So now it's in a larger pot, which I'm sure it appreciates because it was super root bound. There was also a ton of corms, but I just kind of planted them back in there. So I'll see if any of those sprout. My Hoya that I broke the roots off of in one of the last videos, and then my Matilde um, silver that we repotted in one of the last videos as well. Not too many updates on the rest of them on here. Ooh, although I do have an update on my Anthurium politiflorum. Oh my goodness, I just can never get over this plant. Like I see it in person every single day, but even just seeing it on the viewfinder of my camera, I'm just like, wow, she is immaculate. So the update with her is that, well, I repotted her a few weeks ago now. I did it for an Instagram reel. Um, I think I po maybe posted it on shorts here too, but she's actually putting out a new leaf now. Look at this. It's still just like baby, baby, like it's still expanding. So I'm not even gonna do anything with it, but hopefully you can see. Oh my gosh, it's just so, so stunning. Man, I love this plant. Um, people ask me sometimes if this is some sort of like narrow form and I don't even know, I just bought it or, I, or it was just, I didn't even buy it. North Shore Tropical sent it to me a couple years ago um, and it was just labeled as politiflorum, but I love how narrow it is. Like I'm so glad that I have this one particularly. I just think that it's such a great specimen and it's just been such a joy to grow. Um, if I ever cut this up, I'll probably root all of the propagations and then keep those to like sell or trade because I feel like this is just a plant that needs to be shared. Oh yeah, this sucks though. I noticed this the other day that one of the leaves is like broken and I don't know who did that or how that happened, but it's a bummer. Poor thing. So that one's like yellowing off now. So sad, but hopefully she'll give a few new leaves here in the growing season now that she's repotted she should be extra happy okay now coming up to the cabinet those gals on top are doing well everyone's kind of doing well around here actually this calathea rufabarba is struggling a little bit mostly from my, my underwatering well pretty much entirely from my underwatering i'm thinking that i want to get that transferred into pond i just it sounds like an undertaking because it's so big so that's on my list but i haven't done it yet obviously I think she would benefit from that though. Okay, let's pop into the cabinet here. Oh my gosh, the cabinet is looking full these days. <laughs> Look at her. Like, are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. Yeah, this cabinet is crazy lately. Filled to the brim. Okay, so I'm not sure if my Cartel Dawn and Therium video went up by now or if this video is going up first, but I do give a more thorough update on all of my um, Anthurium from Cartel Dunn that I got last year in that video. So yeah, but obviously we have some new stunning leaves. This is the King of Spades, love her so much. But yeah, the plants in here are all doing amazing. Oh, so I rotted my variegated dragon scale, which what the heck? I know, literally one of my all-time favorite plants and I freaking rotted it, but we have tons of new healthy roots. Oh my gosh, get out of the way, ma'am. We have tons of new healthy roots. I just popped it into some water with Super Thrive and she is rooted like a charm. Um, what else? This new cutie fried egg leaf. I just grew this from a corm and I think that it's so pretty. I love how dark the green, look how shiny. It like literally looks like silk and it's super dark green with stunning variegation. So I'm really happy with that baby. Another plant that I'm really happy with is my Hoya Lucantha from Plant Haven Toronto. This one is so, I just like, I can't believe it whenever I look at this Hoya. It is so pretty. I don't know how this wasn't even on my wish list before I got it. It's so unique and just like, 
it just looks whimsical. Like, look at that. It's super thin leafed and it just like flows and trails so, so beautifully. And the emergent color, that like bronzy color, like, are you kidding me? It's so gorgeous. I'll need to get this potted up soon too. It's been growing like an absolute weed. There's like multiple um, vines on it, but it's even dry right now. I should bring it to the sink. But um, yeah, I need to get this potted up because I just think it needs to come out of the moss. It's time, but look at how cool that is. We have a new leaf on my Allocation Mellow. The first leaf, it's grown in my care. So, so pretty. Love the texture, love the color. We potted up my philodendron gigas and got this on a pole, um, gosh, I don't know, maybe four to six weeks ago now, and it's literally done nothing, so I don't know. I'm like, are you well? Um, it has this weird damage on it, but it had that before too, so I don't think it's anything new. But yeah, I don't know if it's just taking a long time to get established. I don't know. The other cuttings that I potted, um, just the extra ones, are actually growing. Like. I've gotten some new leaves on that one, so it's kind of funny that I haven't gotten any new leaves on the one that I like tried to make all nice. Ooh, I also have a little baby dragon's breath growing right here from Corm, And this is actually really exciting, you guys. This is a Monstera Albo that I grew from Wet Stick. And this is probably the nicest variegation I've ever had on a Monstera Albo. And I cut up, oh my goodness, you guys, I cut up my Monstera Albo into so many different cuttings just hoping for some nice variegation and none of them, like they all just reverted. And then I had these two wet sticks that I hadn't um, grown yet and they rooted up. So I potted them and I got nice variegation on that one. And then the second one is growing as well. And it looks like I might be getting, just wait, let me turn this around. It looks like I might be getting nice variegation on this one too. Like it looks pretty white. So I would just be thrilled about that. I guess patience is key, my friends. SB Silver needs to be repotted onto a pole soon. I'm probably gonna film, like document that process because I get a lot of questions about putting a crawler onto a pole. So I'm gonna try it again. Who knows if it'll work. This leaf looks kind of like chlorotic, I think just because it was the first one from the wet stick, but otherwise she's doing really well. There's lots of like new growth coming in. Yeah, she's Gorgina. Okay, and then down here, as you can see, we have some more stunning plants. Oh my gosh, you guys, I just, I am so grateful for my collection right now. It's doing, like, things are doing amazing. And yes, there's been a lot of pest issues going on, but despite that, things are just looking amazing. Things are growing. Is this literally coming off? Oh my gosh, it looks like I lost a suction cup. And this is like, oh my gosh, this one came down. Okay. I'm going to need to fix that later. Is this just resting on the ground? I think the grid is just resting on the bottom of the cabinet. Um, okay, interesting. Um, but yeah, I'm just so grateful. Like, oh yeah, I just have some beautiful plants in my collection and they bring me so, so much joy. So this is one that I've been obsessed with lately. This is my Alocasia Odora variegated. And um, I'm just obsessed with the variegation on it. Like, I love that just like chunky variegation with the white and the mint like the different shades of green it is just so so pretty so that one has been doing pretty well for me lately i got that from we pot plants hoya gps 7240 had some sort of issue i didn't know if it was fungal or what the heck or maybe like flat mites i don't know i treated it with sulfur mostly for the like fungal looking stuff but obviously that would take care of flat mites as well and it hasn't really grown since then so i don't know i'm just kind of waiting on it but i might take cutting soon just for insurance because i'm getting kind of worried about it the rest of my hoya in here are doing well though we have my um biakensis it's giving me these like crazy sunstress looking leaves i've never had leaves that look like this on this plant before but they're really cool so that's neat. And then my obsession right here, I love this Hoya. This is another plant that I didn't know I needed until I got one. And it is the Hoya Silver Lady. It is just so pretty. It's been growing like a weed since I got it. Oh my goodness. It's one of those ones that looks silver and then it sun stresses like purple. And yeah, I'm just obsessed with it. I think it's so cute. Yeah, she's stunning. She's thick too. She's like cardboard. My fry deck has just been blowing my mind. It's looking so, so beautiful. And there's actually a new leaf on the way back there. So really, really exciting. That's gonna have to come out of the cabinet ASAP. 
my Goliath Forgetii leaf. This is the newest one. So, so stunning. Like I said, you'll see this in my Cartel Done video. All of these you'll see updates on in that video, but I'm obsessed with that one in particular lately. Okay, and then down here we have my Viricosum, which is actually giving me a new leaf. So really excited to see that. And it definitely looks a little bit bigger than the last ones. So really cool. This is a plant. Oh, I need to pin her on more. This is a plant that I've really been keeping an eye on because I'm just so excited to be growing this out <laughs> again. I keep restarting Viricosum over, but let's hope that this is going to be the time that I just like grow it out once and for all. We also have my Monstera dubia here, which I honestly don't know how I feel about this plant anymore. It just doesn't look good and I don't know what's wrong with it. And I don't know if I really have the um, motivation to even troubleshoot it right now. I was kind of considering just getting rid of it, but that also makes me sad because I used to love this plant so much. It was one of my absolute favorites. So uh, I don't know if I wanna give up on it just yet, but it just looks so yellow. Like it just doesn't look good. Do you see how just, yeah, it looks yellow. I don't know if it's a nutrient thing or what. And it's like, it's totally slowed down on growth too. Um, maybe it has pests, I don't know. But yeah, mm, I should probably do something to troubleshoot this before it's too far gone. Okay, since we're down here, my succulent shelf, they're all looking really good. I don't think there's too much. I don't think there's really been too many changes here since I did my plant tour. Um, I've rearranged a little bit. I still have some of my variegated Thanksgiving cactus cuttings there. I gave one away to a plant friend the other day. Um, yeah, they're all doing well. Up here, however, we do have an exciting update, probably one of the more exciting updates um, of today's video. And that is uh, my Monstera Aurea, you guys. She has been reborn into, what the heck is that? Oh my gosh, you guys, I literally thought that was a thrip larvae, but it's not, it's just like a speck of something. I was like, no, just when I thought this plant was doing well. Um, yes, my Monstera Aurea, oh, the sun's coming out now. I transferred her to pawn at the end of last year in an attempt to decrease the browning that was happening on this plant. It was just like completely browning all the, like every single leaf, it would stay nice for a short period of time and then it would just brown off. Um, so I did that because it seemed to be linked to the watering. Like it seemed like when I watered the plant, it would just, the water was almost like too much for the yellow parts and the cells would just burst and it would brown off. So I figured if it's in semi-hydro and it's getting like consistent water, then maybe that won't happen. That's my theory that I'm going with. Um, and I, it hasn't been long enough for me to really tell because I'm just, I've just started getting new leaves and they've just been hardening off. Um, and the browning happens after they harden off. So time will tell, but she's been growing like crazy. So I think she's definitely happy. This is the first new leaf that came out. It's still, um, the variegation's still coming out because it's Polaroid variegation. So you can't really see it when the leaves are really fresh, but then they harden off and you can see it. This is an old leaf. This is, I think the only old leaf that I kept on it, but she's covered in new leaves. And yeah, I'm just so, so excited. Like there's already growth. There's already another new leaf coming in there. And um, yeah. They're everywhere. Literally new leaves all over her. Honestly, she probably needs an up pod already because there's so many different cuttings in here. Look at that. I might separate them out. I don't know, but that root is literally trying to make an escape. Do you see that? Oh my gosh. Anyways, so far she's doing well and it just makes me so happy. Half moon vibes, okay. Um, so yeah, I've just been so excited to show y'all her keeping our fingers crossed that she's not gonna start browning again. My medium medium silver is not doing anything. I actually almost got rid of this the other day, but then I was like, no, 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 let me just wait a little bit longer and see if it gives me growth. It has this big vine growing up the pole, but no leaves yet. Oh my gosh, is it putting one out? <gasps> I think it might be giving me a leaf, you guys. It's a miracle. Okay, I'm gonna be keeping an eye on that. I think that that might be a leaf. Beside that, we have my beautiful philodendron orange marmalade. This leaf actually got stuck and it had spider mites. So I had to trade it for spider mites um, and free this leaf. It was all crumpled. So it's a little bit damaged, but honestly not as bad as I was expecting. It looks pretty good for the state that it was in, but look at that orange, like, oh my goodness. She's just so stunning. I actually think that I wanna get this one up on the wall. I just feel like she needs a better spot. Um, 
yeah, she's not displayed here very well. So I think I need to do some rearranging and get this one more visible because she's kind of just in the corner here and nobody puts baby in the corner. Am I right? And then down here we have my Epipremnum Cebu Blue, which we recently chopped and extended. If you saw that video from a couple of weeks ago, she seems to be settling in fairly well. Like she looks the same. She is still pushing out this new leaf. Um, it did get damaged a little bit. I kind of bumped it on the floor, unfortunately, but I think that the damage might be minimal. Um, you can kind of see it on like the top there, but it looks pretty minimal. So maybe it won't be that bad. The new leaf is small, but she did just go through a chop and extend, so I'm gonna give her some grace. Um, overall, I'm really impressed with how she's doing. I'm not gonna climb up there and grab my Hoya from the second window, but they are all doing well and they're all giving me new growth. I just haven't been taking them up and down very much because there was thrips up there. I think that they're pretty much resolved, but I just, I don't wanna handle them when I don't have to, so trust that they're doing well and um, I'll bring them down soon to give you guys a closer look, but they're all growing and doing just amazing. Um, actually, I'll insert some footage of the Kaimuki at the end there, right there, um, because that one's pushing out new leaves, which just look so, so gorge. They're just loving all of the light that they're getting up there. I will, however, take down my Glorious because she's put out a new leaf and it looks stunning. So let me go grab her. All right, so here's my philodendron glorious and she has been putting out some stunning new growth lately. This is her newest leaf. Oh, it's still kind of soft. Look at that. Oh my gosh, it is so, so pretty. I'm super, super impressed with this plant. Yeah, she's just stunning. We have another new leaf back here as well. So, so cute. And I think that she's kind of drooping a little bit because the light isn't really from above her. She's actually pretty much outgrown that spot that she was in up on the wall. Um, she normally lives up here. You can see it's like kind of marking up, marking up the wall where she sits. But, um, but yeah, I think she's gonna need to come down soon. It'll be nice to see her down again though because she just looks so much different like on the wall versus off of the wall. I mean, all of my plants do. Even like my Wally grows just look so crazy when I take them down to water them. But yeah, just a little update that she is looking so good. I recently put my Hoya obovada into pawn in an attempt to get some nice leaves on it because I was always just getting like weird funky growth on this plant and I actually considered getting rid of it. But then I was like, no, wait, let me try pawn because again, I feel like it's an underwatering issue and I've been getting some really nice leaves since it has been in pawn. Like, look at that, that is so pretty. I love how the sun's dressing is pink too because this is in a south window. Don't mind all of my <laughs> garden crap outside the window. Um, but yeah, she's doing really well. And since this regular green one had been doing so well, I decided to actually try my variegated, uh, I was gonna say polynera, variegated obovada in the same setup. So um, I've just done this about a week ago, so I don't have any new growth or anything yet. But again, it's kind of a last ditch effort to help this plant because it obviously just doesn't look good. So we'll see how that one does. I have a lot of propagations that need to be topped up. They're all kind of drying out here. I mean, they're not even propagations anymore. These are literally full blown plants that need to come out of here and need to be potted. So that's something that I really need to get to. Um, what else? My Marble Queen, she's doing well on the pole. Not really any crazy updates on there. Oh yeah, I do have a ping that's flowering. Look at this little cutie. I think that this is Ignata. I'll have to um, look up what the flower looks like for Ignata to see if that's what it is. But look at this cutie. It's not fully open yet, but oh my gosh, I'm just obsessed. And she's so sun-stressed now. Like, look at her and she's really catching. The fungus gnats have been out and about lately, so these guys are being well fed. Tons of sunstress still, com still coming in on my um, New Guinea Ghost. So, so pretty. Yeah, love that plant so much. My Syningia is still looking like crap. I don't know why it won't just drop these leaves. Like, I'm like, come on girl, just let them go. Like, just let them go. But they're hanging on for dear life. However, it looks like we do have some new growth starting at the bottom. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I'm just letting her do her thing. I don't know if I should cut these off. I think that people said, no, she'll just drop them. So I've just been leaving them. Like I said, I moved my Anthurium Crystal Meg um, the other day because it was getting too close to the grow light. So now it's just temporarily sitting here. I don't even know what to do with her. Like she is so 
massive. Um, I did repot her also. That's bios on the top there. I need to water that through next time I water her. But um, she's beautiful. Like this anthurium is just so insane to me. I can't believe that I've grown it to be this big. Um, I probably should cut off the inflow because I don't think I'm going to be doing anything with that. But um, yeah, she's just hanging out here for now, but she is in a nice big pot now, thankfully. I have my Escaletto kind of backwards to us. It's facing the window because I'm trying to straighten it out a little bit. It was growing pretty crooked just because it was reaching towards the light. And um, yeah, so I've just kind of got it like tilted a little bit so that the leaves kind of turn that way. But this is the newest leaf. It's still hardening off. And she also seems to be adjusting well to her chop and extend. We did a chop and extend in the same video that we did the Cebu Blue one in and she's settling in well. So yeah, that's really good. Also bios that needs to be watered into her. I put bios in all of my, oh my gosh, I, had, I haven't even watered it in and it's already activating on this one. See the fuzz? That's so crazy. I really do feel like it helps my plants. So I like to put it in, especially for my bigger plants, just or any plants that are struggling or have just been repotted or anything. So I thought that it'd be a really good thing to use for my chop and extend plants. Okay, now over here we have my Syngonium Frosted Heart, which we transferred to a different pole. We actually cut this. This is now like, um, I guess a mid cut um, that is rooting into the pot and continuing to root into the pole. We have a new leaf that's coming out. So that's a good sign. She looks good. She looks good, you guys. She feels a little soft. Like I think she definitely took a little bit of a hit from that and got a little stressed, but I think she's gonna be okay. Philodendron Serpens is looking kind of crazy, but she is starting to work on a new leaf. So good for her. Doesn't want to focus, but it's like just starting to emerge. And I think I'm going to move these out of the way so that I can show you my begonia cabinet because it is just looking insane lately. Oh, speaking of begonia, I just realized that I forgot to show you um, my new plants. They're sitting here just on the kitchen table and I am so excited. I honestly haven't been this excited about a plant in a long time as I am about this one. This is her. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> this is called Begonia Polensis. And this was given to me by a local plant person. Um, we're kind of neighbors. She lives like a block from me. So um, we did a little plant trade and she gifted me some trees for our yard as like a, home, a housewarming gift, which was really nice. Um, and this, yeah, I was just so shook. I've never seen anyone, well, I've seen this on Instagram maybe like once or twice, but I never see this in people's collections. Obviously it looks like a spider web, so it's just like insane. Um, my boyfriend really likes this one too and I knew he would. I was so excited to show him when I got home or when he got home, sorry. It's also fuzzy. So this plant is truly just what begonia dreams are made of. Like it is so, so cool and these can actually get big like big leaves so yeah wow i'm just absolutely in love with it we have a little baby leaf coming in there so that's my little updates on that one and then i also got a second begonia she offered me begonias and i was like say less like i'm just obsessed as y'all know um so this is my begonia cleopatra and um it's hard to see through the cup but as you can see, she has like cool colors and patterns. She's like a really neon. Oh my gosh, like the neon green is so pretty and the red petiole, she's stunning. I think that this is more of a terrarium begonia. Um, I'll have to look into it, but yeah. She just has a little bit of water in there, but I cannot wait to watch that one grow. Begonias and Hoya are probably like my hyperfixation plants right now. I do also want more pings, but I just can't really justify buying more pings right now. Actually, I want more carnivorous plants in general, but I'm kind of making myself wait until I get a better setup for my pings because I feel like if I'm gonna spend money on something, it should be for like some sort of ping, ping pots or some sort of just like cute setup. Not that it has to be expensive. I'll probably just go to the thrift store and see what I can find. But um, yeah, I feel like I just need to get them in a more permanent house household, I was gonna say, home, um, before I purchase more of them. But yeah, I do love pings. Anyways, I don't know why I'm talking about my wishlist plants. <laughs> okay, so here we have my begonia little greenhouse. And honestly, you guys, I'm pretty impressed with this greenhouse. Like, 
it the plants in here are doing so well um and i and i totally just like i don't know just like jimmied this like it's really diy i didn't do anything special there's just like a cheap barina light in here like it's very just like um an easy kind of affordable setup and my begonias are just doing so well in here so i'm gonna open it up to show you i mean most of them are doing well most of them are doing well Oop. okay the weather stripping doesn't really like to stay on <laughs> that's one thing I could glue it. Maybe I will do that in the future, but you can see a piece literally just, I'm gonna talk about this cabinet more in depth because I've had some people ask questions. Um, I think I'm gonna do a whole video kind of like repotting these begonias and I'll maybe like talk about the cabinet in that video. Oh, you can see my monkey through there. Hi, baby. Oh, she's stretching. Good girl. Oh, that's a good girl. Hi, Cadence. Um, Okay, so as you can see, we have so many flowers, like half of the begonias in here are in bloom, which is so just wild. And these ones are my favorites. I cannot believe how cool these flowers are. Look at this. Look at how pretty those are. These are coming from my begonia chloristicta, I believe. And wow, they're just so cute. Yeah, I'm obsessed with these. Like, they're all flowering. Like, how cute is that? Oh my gosh, I freaking love begonias. Oh my gosh, look at the new leaf coming in on her, on my Chloristicta. That is so pretty. As you can see, the, what is this pink one called again? I wanna say Malacosticta, is that right? Gosh, I always forget the names. But um, this pink one, she's just growing like a weed. Like, she's massive. Just massive. Look how tall she is compared to the rest of them. It's so crazy. Oh my gosh, more cute little flowers on her. Yeah, they're all doing so, so well. This one is doing really well. Also, this little like green one. So cute. My freaking Milano Bellotta, you guys. Like she is growing and I am perishing. She's growing, I'm dying. Like what the heck? Look at these hairy leaves, oh my gosh. I can't handle it, I can't handle it. Like that's so freaking cool. I really wanna get her repotted cause she's squished. But yeah, these are truly just blowing my mind. Like y'all need to get on the begonia train with me. I'm so serious. I'm so serious. It is, life is good over here. And this is so low maintenance. I just like squirt some water in here like once every two weeks probably. So, so, so low maintenance. I'm actually gonna leave it open to just air out a little bit and then I'm gonna add some water after I'm done filming. But yeah, wow, just look at that. Oh man, it's heavenly. Look at her. <laughs> what are you doing, girl? Girl. <sighs> what a monkey. Okay, my plants over here on this shelf are honestly kind of flat mighty. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I kind of fell behind on my treatments, so I think that they still have flat mites, but I have not checked my variegated Thanksgiving cactus for flat mites, but I'm fairly certain that it has them because the new growth has just been like funky and it's been really slow, gr slow growing. Like it just hasn't been acting like itself. So I'm pretty sure it has flat mites because I'm pretty sure that Hoya has flat mites and they're like touching and yeah, it's just a whole thing. However, since I've treated my Matilde, it um, has started growing again. So wait, where is it? Right there. Um, well, there's new growth like all over the place, but there's cutie baby leaves. But the thing is when you treat for flat mites, um, the plant will start growing like pretty much instantly. Like in a matter of days, you'll start seeing new growth again. If it's like, you know, a plant that grows at a reasonable rate. Um, so that's a nice thing. Like it's really rewarding once you treat them. So I need to treat these guys again. Okay, and then we're gonna be moving over to the living room area. Big stretch, girl, look at that. Um, so yeah, as you can see, we moved this rug. This rug was in our office um, and it just, we moved some stuff around in the office and it just wasn't really working in there anymore. So we moved it out here and I think that it looks so cute like with all of the plants and everything. It's kind of like a planty rug. It's from Ruggable, so it wasn't cheap, but it's really convenient for us to be able to wash it with the dogs and everything. Um, whoops. But yeah, it's really, really cute. I'm super, super happy with it here in the living room. Anyways, okay, so plants. Who needs an update? Who needs an update? I know one thing that's really cool that's going on over here, but we'll get to that momentarily. 
Moodyanum isn't really growing. Viterifolium seems, seems to have taken, oh, I was gonna say seems to have taken to its repot. Well, that leaf is literally dead. Maybe not. Okay, we'll continue to monitor her. I'm still not even sure if I'm gonna keep this plant, but she's here for now. My alocasia Jacqueline here, she was pretty much dormant for the winter, I would say. And I don't usually have my alocasia go dormant, but yeah, she has not grown in a long time. And she did put out something, but it was a bloom. And I think that she is putting out another bloom. So <laughs> that's kind of annoying. I would like to see a leaf from her, but she just wants to bloom for now. And I'm like, okay, girl, I guess that's fine. You do you. This leaf's getting yellow. She's gonna be down to two leaves soon. New growth on my variegated Opuntia after she was overwintered down in the basement. She's coming back nicely and doing well. A bunch of blooms on my Hoya Williniana as usual. We have a few different clusters. Where's the other one I just saw? Oh, right under here. She always has multiple blooms coming in or actively blooming, which is always fun. Oh my gosh, I just spotted this for the first time, you guys. I just spotted this. <gasps> my variegated Hoya Bella, they're open. I just checked this morning and they weren't open yet, but they're open now. Oh my gosh. <gasps> they're so, oh my gosh, wait, she's spinning, she's spinning. Oh my gosh. <gasps> they're so cute, stop it. Stop it right now, I'm obsessed. <gasps> Oh my gosh. Okay, I know that Hoya Bella blooms are so like common. It's a really prolific bloomer. So, so they're not anything like, uh, like I guess unusual or you know, you kind of see them all the time, but they're just so pretty. Like, I don't care how common they are. These are some of the prettiest blooms. Like the white and the dark pink is just so stunning. Oh my gosh, they look so cute there on my little variegated one. The inner variegated too, that's my favorite one. No offense to the outer variegated, but what the heck? We also have another one coming in. That's one's coming in on the outer variegated. So, oh, that is just so cool. That totally made my day, what the heck? How cute, how cute. I'm always getting emotional over my blooms. I also got some new Hoya here. I did an unboxing on my Patreon, um, but I'll pull them out here and kind of show them to you. Then it gives me a chance to check on them as well. Oh, by the way, we have these two velvety cuties sitting on the coffee table now. Um, anyways, my new Hoyas here, they are so, so cute. First of all, we have Hoya, uh, uh, is it Lachinosa Silver Dollar? I think so. Really, really pretty and one that I've really been keen on as well. Um, these were gifted to me by a subscriber, which was just like so, so nice. I was not expecting all these cuttings. I'll show you the other one that she sent me that I knew she was sending me. Um, but these were just like extras that she threw in and yeah, I was so, so shook. Um, so this one is variegated Hoya Wyetii, which I have the just regular green one and I love it. So I've always had my eye on these, but I just never had one before. So I'm really excited about that. We also have variegated Bertonier. I need to kind of fix this um, situation, <laughs> but we have variegated Bertonier in here. And then we also have variegated Lachinosa. So really, really cool variety of plants. And I'm so excited about all of them. The one that she originally offered to send me because I had one before and it wouldn't grow um, and she had an extra one. So I knew that she was sending this one, but I was not expecting it to be the size that it is. Like, look at this, you guys. Oh my gosh, this is my brand new Hoya Polyneura broguette. And oh my goodness, this has to be like the prettiest one I've ever seen. Look at how minty those leaves are and how huge, like it's massive. Oh my gosh, I don't know what she's been feeding these, but like, oh my goodness. Yeah, I could not believe it. This is like a full plant, like it's rooted and it is just so, so stunning. So that is a really exciting addition. Like, look at all of these. Oh my goodness. I don't even wanna know how many Ahoya I have now. Like, a lot, but I cannot get over this. Like, I truly can't. It's just so stunning. The size of these leaves. I've never seen a Polyneura this big before. It's just insane. Yeah, this is gorgeous. I have her over here by the south window. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab what I was excited to show you guys. I just noticed this today. 
and I gasped. I've never had this happen before, um, but I don't know if any of y'all remember in my moss poll video, I gave an update on my philodendron domesticum on a poll, and um, I showed y'all that it looked like it had two like tips to the new leaf coming in, but you couldn't really see what was going on with it. Um, because it was just like still like completely furled, but the leaves have continued to develop and they're starting to unfurl. And look at this, notice that I said leaves because it's literally a double leaf. Like how insane is that? I've never had this happen before. They are sharing a petiole, like they're attached one petiole and then it branches into two leaves. We'll be able to see better once it like fully emerges, but I could not believe this. That is so cool. Like that is just so freaking cool. What the heck? I can't wait to see if there's variegation on them as well. I've just, yeah, it's so neat to, oh my gosh, you guys. And it looks like, it honestly looks like it might be doing it again because there's like, let me show you. Can you see the new like little um, growth point thing? There's two, it's like a double headed one again coming in down there. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see, but imagine if this gave me another set of double leaves. <laughs> what? What in the heck is going on here? That is so wild. Let me know if this has happened to your plant. <laughs> I was really excited to show you that cause it's just so unusual. We love unusual here on this channel. Okay, and then I actually do have a cool update for my Philodendron Bromarks Fantasy as well. It's finally starting to grow nicely. This is a plant that I honestly almost got rid of and then I was like, no, wait, let me grow it out. Let me try to get some nice big leaves on it and then I'll decide if I like it or not. So I tried to stay on top of watering, tried to stay, stay on top of the moss pole, staying moist, and I started feeding it with cow mag. And with those three changes, I have started getting some nice leaves on it. So I'll show you the newest one. Um, it looks stunning. However, I still just don't know if this plant is for me. Like, I don't know if I'm completely in love with it. Um, it's beautiful. I just don't know if it's, I'm trying to be more picky with my plants because obviously I have so many in my collection. Um, but you guys let me know what you think when we look at these new leaves here. Okay, so this is her. This is a nice big new leaf. The color is beautiful. The texture is beautiful. It's a really like thick leaf. Like it's definitely different than a lot of philodendron in my collection. Well, than most of them really. Like it's just like, it is a really unique plant. Love how like uh, short the petioles are. So it sits really close and really flat to the moss pole. The new leaves are stunning. Look at that pink color. This looks like it's gonna be flawless, beautiful. I'm so, so happy with how well that's coming in. I can't wait to see the new leaf. Yeah, so it is looking stunning and it's doing really well, but I just don't know. What do you guys think? Do you like it? Should I keep growing it? Or should I rehome it? I cannot decide, but I feel like the fact that I can't decide is perhaps my decision made already. Like if I don't love it enough that I like, no, feel like I need to have it, then maybe I should just rehome it, but I don't know, it's so pretty. And now that it's giving me these nice leaves, I'm like, mm, I don't know what to think about this one. Anyways, that is a positive update for that one because it was really struggling down here. I don't know if y'all remember, but there's like bare vine and like weird leaves coming in, but now it's doing really well. I usually have it facing the window like that. On top of the Millsbo wide here, we have my Philodendron Mame new leaf. I showed this recently in my Q&A video, but yeah, it's just so pretty. We also have a new Thai constellation, well, a new Tortum and Thai constellation leaf, double whammy. There's the new Thai leaf. I'll try to move the light, you can see it better. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. Oh, I'm just obsessed with this plant. I'm obsessed, look at these two leaves. Like, literal perfection. I am in love with them. We have this big creamy, this is the biggest cream like sectoral variegation I've had on this plant. We have some lighter variegation over here, but it's mostly minty. And this is like cream. So yeah, she is looking stunning. 
really, really happy with how well she's doing. I think I need to water her today though. She's getting a little dry. I've started keeping my grow lights on for another hour or two, or at least I'm trying to just because we're going into the growing season and I just want to see, you know, as much growth as possible. And yeah, they're doing really well with that. Okay, and then hopping inside, actually look at this egg Leonema first. She is just so beautiful. This plant honestly looks fake. Like it's so perfect looking and it's so undemanding. If you want an easy, easy care silver plant, this is your gal. She's so beautiful. Look at this nice big new leaf coming in. Yeah, I'm in love with her. She just looks so beautiful here. So anyways, hopping inside the cabinet. Okay, so there actually is, I mean, this cabinet is kind of in, in renovation, I guess I could say. I'm actually working on a video for, um, I think it's gonna be for Patreon, I'm not sure yet, but um, of just kind of like re, just refreshing this cabinet. So it's kind of in the middle phase right now, but um, I do have some really cool things happening in here. I guess we'll start at the top. Um, let me see here, oh yes. This is my Alocasia Pink Dragon Aurea Corm. It has popped this cutie little leaf. Look at the pink petioles. I'm literally obsessed with this. I really wanted Alocasia Pink Dragon. I was having trouble finding them and I asked Wee Pot Plants if she had any because she's like the Alocasia Queen. Um, and she said she didn't have any Pink Dragon, but she had a Pink Dragon Aurea Corm from her personal plant. So she sent it to me so graciously and um it's popped and look at that like it's so cute you can see spots of the variegation coming in can't wait for this to get more mature it's gonna be so fun to grow this out so yeah that's been really exciting this what it's sitting in was my um zabrina reticulata and i don't know if it's toast i'm so sad that this plant just like wanted to croak on me i don't know what the heck that was about Oh yes, other exciting news here. I have waited for uh, four months for a new leaf on my Syngonium Chia Pence variegated and it finally happened, friends, but it looks like all white. So I'm a little concerned, do you see that? I am a little concerned, but very, very excited. Why is it not focusing? I'm very excited to see that unfurl. This is really exciting stuff here because I just, I was getting kind of worried about this plant. Um, I ended up putting some bios in there and moving it just a little bit closer to the grow light. You can see I've boosted it up on that cup. And after I did those things, it's popped out new growth. So thank goodness for that. We also have some cutie new growth on my Hoya Sigillatus up here. Look at that. It's so pink, just adorable. We repotted this recently, it's doing well. I'm in the middle of propagating my variegated micans, the halo one. My Alocasia Aurea, or my Alocasia Adora Aurea is going crazy here. Oh my gosh, she's really outgrowing the cabinet. I need to move her out soon. And as you can see, there is also something very, very exciting happening here with my Bulbophyllum orchid. She has put out this flower spike, I think it's called. Um, I don't know how long, I've honestly never bloomed an orchid before, so I don't know how long this whole process. Oh my gosh, is that another one? <gasps> is it stuck? <gasps> oh my gosh, you guys, is it stuck? What the heck? I don't know what to do. What's a procedure? I'm not gonna do anything because I don't know what to do. Wait, let me just see if it'll just like come away. Okay, I just very gently pulled her out and she's free now, but it might just be damaged now, I'm not sure. Um, anyways, oh my gosh, is it starting to open up? Oh my goodness. Okay, so this is my Bulbophyllum long, Longissimum. And this I specifically bought because it has like insane looking blooms. They look like weird little fish or something. And I'm absolutely in love with them. So uh, I was not expecting mine to bloom already. I just got this at the end of last year, I think. And this is, like I said, I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to orchids. Um, so I'm honestly kind of shocked that it's trying to bloom for me already, but who knows? Maybe I won't, maybe that won't actually like open up into flowers. Maybe it'll just croak because I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see what happens, but I'm just excited that it was even able to get this far. Like what the heck? So I'll definitely be updating if I end up getting blooms. Uh, I put my Epipremnum marble on a Rousseau bowl recently. 
And what else? What else? I think that that's it. My Forgetti Eye has been doing pretty well in this self-watering pot. Um, these are new Anthurium from Cartel Done. They're just hanging out there in water. I should check on those soon. And um, I'll probably put them into sphagnum moss. They've just been hanging out there for the past couple of days, recovering. So I think that that is almost everything. I just thought I'd pop into the bedroom quick to give you an update. Mostly I wanted to show you the asparagus fern, but I guess I'll just give an update on the rest of the plants in here. Um, the polyneura is growing really, really well. We actually have a lot of new growth points and things on her. So yeah, she's getting a lot of light. So she's not like a super dark color, but I'm just leaving her here for now. Monkey tail is just stable. Hasn't really been doing anything crazy, but it's just hanging out. So that's good enough for me. Gloriosum is absolutely out of control. I'm gonna have to do something about this plant soon because well, what happened is I was going to separate this. I was going to completely propagate this plant. So I went and I cut up all like in between each node of the crawling vine along the bottom. And then I didn't remove any of them. So they're all still in there and they're all like their own plants now. So there's like a million growth points. Like I can see like one, two, three, four. Like there's so many new leaves coming in. Um, this looks like a nice big one. Look at that. It's very satisfying. Um, but now, especially that she's getting light from the Soltex, she's just been like on turbo mode. She's kind of facing weird ways because I just turned her around um, to kind of balance her out a little bit. So she was, the pot was flipped the other way until a couple of days ago. Look at that, this is brand new. It's still hardening off. Such a pretty philodendron, like, yeah, I love her. Um, sticky though, extra floral nectaries on there. Anyways, I wanted to come in here to give you an update on the asparagus fern. We repotted this a couple of months ago and she has just been taking off since then. I'm getting some really huge fronds on her. Look at that. Like they are so cool looking. I just love this plant so much. Like I cannot emphasize enough how easy going it is as long as it has lights, y'all. Like she will love you. And I mean, she doesn't even get the best quality of light. Like she literally just has this dinky one and she's still just like doing so well. And I just love how fluffy she looks. Such a cool plant. So yeah, I just wanted to give you an update because I was just noticing the other day just how massive she's getting. Like what the heck? I'm actually gonna have to move her out of this spot at some point. She's like encroaching into my sleeping space. <laughs> but yeah, I love her so, so much. Wally grows need to be watered today. That's about the only update I have for them. Yeah. There are some things happening in here. Like I told y'all, oh my goodness. Just even just doing these videos makes me so happy just walking around and appreciating all of my plants. It feels good. It feels good to admire them. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed seeing all these updates on my plants. Once again, a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. If you would like to try out Skillshare for yourself, the first 500 people who click the link down below in the description box will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Let me know if you have any questions down below or any comments. I would love to chat with you. If you could give this video a like, I would appreciate that so much. If you made it to the end, you're the best. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.